Hello everyone, my name is Kate Kaltoff and welcome to a Stamping to Share video. Today I want to share with you some tips with using the Delicate Doilies Large Sizzlet Die. I've had a lot of questions since I posted a video making a Christmas ornament with this die. Um, many people saying that they didn't understand how it was that I used a shim. And so today I'm going to demonstrate how to use a shim. First of all, you're going to need a Big Shot machine. And one of the things that we use with our Big Shot machine is a platform. This is tab two. We usually use our framelits on tab two. This is tab one. And this is where we typically use our, um, our textured embossing folders and also our sizzlets. And then this is no tabs. And no tabs is typically if we need less pressure on something, we'll open it up to no tabs. And so when you use, of course, this sizzlet, you are going to open it up to one tab and you are going to put a cut, well, one of our cutting plates on the bottom. I have a no cut plate, um, very useful when I'm using it with framelits, but today it doesn't really matter. Then I have my cut plate. You can see how very well cut this is. The next thing that I do is I have some shims, and the shims are just half pieces of our vellum cardstock. I use shims because they can take a lot of wear and tear before I need to replace them. I have found when I've used um, just regular cardstock or if I use um, text weight paper, it the pressure from the Big Shot, which I believe is about 2,000 pounds per square inch, will actually cause all of your layers to separate on your paper and it just kind of disintegrates after a very short amount of time. I find vellum is, is, is uh, capable of standing up to a lot more pressure. Then of course the final thing you're going to need is your Big Shot machine. And uh, let me just show you some results with this and I'm, I know you want to actually see it in process but I want to show you just a few things. This is using that die with no shims. I, you can see I used Whisper White cardstock. I have uh, one tricky piece, one, one doily that absolutely didn't even work, even with Whisper White cardstock. And this one was no shims, and, and it actually worked pretty good, and so did this larger one. Then I tried it on regular cardstock, and no shim and you can see I had trouble punching out all of the pieces with no shim. This one I didn't even really attempt. You can see all I was doing was making holes with my poker tool. And then this is the other one with no shim and uh, again had a lot of trouble getting through that. Then I went ahead and used one shim. I'll show you the examples with that. And my my one shim pieces well, of course, the Whisper White now was, was working quite, quite well with one shim. Um, and I was having a little better results with the more trickier die, but it was still sticking an awful lot on the back side. Then one shim with our cardstock. It was okay, but I found that I was still, um, there were still some pieces that were you know, tearing quite a bit from the back side. And of course, who really cares what the back side looks like? But, but it was just more difficult. They weren't popping out freely. And then one shim with the more tricky doily, I still wasn't having any luck. One shim with this doily and regular cardstock, and, and uh, it wasn't working quite as well either. Then I went to two shims. And I will show you the results from that. Well, we all know now that the Whisper White cardstock, you know, was just popping out fabulously. So I won't even show that anymore. And I did get quite good results, even with the tricky one using Whisper White cardstock. However, regular colored cardstock was another story. Um, even with two shims, you know, everything was was punching out pretty good, but still some. As you can see, still some kind of sticky areas in the back. And then uh, two shims with, with regular cardstock with the more tricky doily. Um, very difficult yet. And two shims with this little doily. It would have been, I could have finished it out, but I wanted to show you that it did stick a little bit. You can see how it's sticking a little bit in some places. So three shims for me is the answer. 
um, of course, really crisp images with three shims on Whisper White. Take that away. Very quick, crisp images um, with three shims on our colored card stock. And look at this. Perfectly, perfectly punched out. Um, maybe one little Chad problem back here, but you know what? I just popped it off. So, so nice. And then, uh, of course, this little guy also worked perfectly with three shims. So I guess I'll roll it through for you, showing you how I use three shims. Now you have to remember every Big Shot machine is different. You're going to get results based on the tension of your Big Shot machine, so you really do have to play. First you put your uh, platform down, tab one. I put my no-cut plate. Then I go ahead and I put my, my piece of paper and... You put some cardstock on there. Of course, I don't have this. This is a pretty tight. Oh, I guess it'll fit. Just barely. You can see since I'm just practicing, I'm not worried about getting perfect, perfect cuts on all three pieces as far as popping it out. Then I have my really beat up pad, which goes on over the top. And then, as you can see, I have one sheet of vellum, two sheets of vellum, three sheets of vellum. Take this back. I'm going to put the Big Shot machine right here, and I will warn you, this is going to really take some strength on my part. So, you will now see me put all my muscles into this, and of course I think the camera is probably going to wiggle. It takes a little while to get it through. Oh, and I don't think I had my plates perfectly lined up either because I'm kind of having to force those through also, so it's even harder than normal. But now I've gotten it through with three shims. Take this out of the way. And you can see the, the top plate tends to bow. So every time I use it, I flip it over so, when it, so that I have more of a dome going over the top of my sizzlet. And then here's our, here's our paper pieces, and you can see it's so loose from using three shims that on a couple of my dies, some of the pieces are already popping out. And then this die, the pieces aren't quite ready to pop out, but they do poke out nicely with the, big sh with the uh, paper piercing tool. So hope that helps you a little bit using your delicate doilies. I would say if you've done all this and you still don't have good results, maybe it's time to give your demonstrator a call, or if you are a demonstrator, to call Stamping Support. Have a great day, and thanks so much for stopping by. Bye-bye.